Hey guys, welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. I'm still working through the corrupted footage here, so uh, we'll be a little disjointed again today, but um, I managed to recover some more from my Moho expedition. We're launching this observer probe. This thing is uh, basically just designed to carry scientific instruments and uh, get some science back from this mission, because uh, on the whole there's not a lot of science uh, that I'm going to be gaining from this, so I wanted to get, you know, something back, and uh, at this point I didn't have too many instruments available to me, so I pretty much just slapped everything I had on here, and uh, we'll hope for the best. I still have that problem with remote tech where once things drift out of physics range, I have to go back to the main menu and reload the ship so that the comm stuff all gets reconnected. I don't know why that's still happening, but it is. So uh, anyway, uh, we still have signal delay that we're dealing with here too, so I'm just deploying everything and uh, we'll do some orbital adjustments on this when uh, the signal delay finally catches up here. So at this point our antennas and whatnot have finally got the uh, caught up with the signal delay so uh, I can get everything focused correctly. Basically the main mostly dead body of the craft uh, that brought this here is going to act as a temporary longer range relay for now so we'll keep everything pointed at everything. I'm going to rename this so I can keep track of what it actually is because uh, it's not very descriptive. There we go. So uh, the, we need to adjust the orbit on this still, but again, I have to change some antenna stuff around here. And I'm trying to, yeah, they get into the probe body here. It's kind of tucked in there, all hard to reach. Uh, but we'll rename this thing. To take like Even renaming has a signal delay, oddly enough. Uh, but at this point I think I discovered that I could just time warp. Yeah, I did. And uh, if you just time warp, it catches up and you can do stuff. It makes it a lot easier. So we got all our various comms pointed well enough for now and we have to start plotting our orbital adjustments here to bring this into low MOHO orbit so we can get science from uh, not just hot space high above MOHO here. So we're just uh, while we're on our way down, we're deploying the rest of the antennas and whatnot so we can gather as much science as possible and transmit that back to Kerbin. Uh, science is actually worth a decent amount out here, uh, so that's going to help a lot. This thing looks a little bit ridiculous with all these antenna sticking out in various directions. It's kind of got a lot going on here, but it gets the job done, I guess. So at this point, I'm working out what we want to do with the orbit. The general idea is we're just going to burn and lower our periapsis uh, to get down to a reasonably low orbit. I'm, I'm not sure. I don't remember exactly what it needs to be for MOHO. I guess we'll see as uh, we're watching this. But um, we get, we've done basically everything we possibly can uh, with space high above MOHO. This is going to continue to remain, it's going to remain in orbit anyway to act as a relay satellite. Um, I like to leave these in polar orbits because when I come and launch my other relays in the future, uh, those are going to be in an equatorial orbit and I'll have some coverage of the poles if I leave this in orbit. Uh, it's just a, a polar in a polar orbit. I'm not real worried about polar coverage because I've, I'm probably not going to send anybody up there, but you know, this way we at least have intermittent contact with the North Pole and the South Pole. So at this point, I ran into that communications bug, so I'm going back to reload and all that. So we've gone ahead and done a burn, lowered the uh, periapsis down quite a bit. Uh, looks like we have about 8 meters per second of delta V remaining on this burn. Uh, I used ion engines on this, which I generally um, don't actually like that much. Uh, this was still in 0.23 before the 0.235 update. So ion engines produced a lot less thrust then. I guess they produce like four times as much thrust now. Um, so burns take forever, and uh, you really want to use mech jub when you're using ion engines. If you don't, uh, prepare for some real tedium, because it takes forever to do anything. So at this point, we're going down to periapsis. I'm going to try to get a close pass by of the surface here, see what we can learn. Uh, I'm not sure. I guess I'm going down below 40. I must be going down to like 30 kilometers. And we can't really see much here. Moho's is big and black and scary, but we can start trying to get some of the science gathered here. See what we can pick up. And I'll do the fast forward thing until 
the instruments get the signal here. All right, so we're starting to get our science returns here, and it's quite a lot. So um, I'm pretty happy with that. We're of course we're on the pitch dark side here, so um, I have a lot of batteries, so I wasn't real worried about having enough power to transmit any of this. Can't really see what's going on too well, but um, you know this is kind of the limit of what this probe's capabilities are going to be now. It doesn't. I mean, I could probably run the science scans one more time in low orbit and get a little bit more back, but it's kind of finishing up here with its useful life so I'll end up adjusting it into a circular orbit at a little bit higher of an altitude so that it can uh, like I said act as a relay in the future so our business at MOHO is done for now that means it's time to get back to the space station construction and we have the uh, thermal panels going up to the space station now so that we won't have any overheating problem we can get the solar panels unfurled and uh, actually start getting some power up at the station. This is again just kind of a hodgepodge launcher, pretty much a variation of what I've been using for the rest of everything that's been going up. And uh, I've started putting parachutes on the solid rocket boosters again, just make it a little more realistic I guess. So uh, we'll get this thing up into orbit and rendezvous. Alright so we're just uh, wrapping up our burn, I just wanted to discuss what I'm actually launching here a little bit. It's pretty much the same service module for uh, maneuvering it up into orbit, but uh, this actually has a probe body and some communication dishes on it, as well as some batteries. And the reason being, this is going to be the automated control of the station, so that the station will actually uh, be functional. There won't be any people on board yet, because there's still no crew m uh, modules, but this will allow me to actually have some control over the space station, so it won't just be debris in orbit anymore. Here we are coming in at the space station, and... For once we're actually arriving at sunrise, so that's kind of convenient, that's going to make life a lot easier. Uh, still no sunshine yet, I didn't put any lights I don't think on this either, so a little hard to see, but the sun will be popping up here in just a minute as we close in. Alright, so we're coming in nice and easy now for the final docking, I'm having Mechjeb hold my uh, rotation correct. I got it adjusted the way that I want so the panels will deploy correctly. And uh, that's probably been the greatest thing that they've added to MechJeb in a long time. I very much appreciate that. Because it was always a pain in the butt trying to align things. So, uh, yeah, this is going really well. This is a well balanced uh, craft that's not too long in the front to really throw things off. And it has the extra torque of that probe body down there, too. So it steers pretty nice, actually. And. Magnets go contact. There we go. And for whatever reason, the RCS is all firing again. So it seems, it seems to do that every time. So we have like the the main utility sections of the station up and running now. So it's time to start working on getting some crew modules up here, uh, and we can get the power turned on and stuff. Then I've been slowly crashing these back into the planet, the uh, service craft, uh, so that. It's not too crowded up here as far as part count and stuff. Mainly I'm just trying to transfer RCS fuel down into the RCS tank as I need it. And uh, keep that thing topped off. Alright, so with the solar panel, I mean not the solar panels, with the thermal panels up here now, we can start deploying the solar panels and get the station powered up so that it's actually operating on its own power instead of just depending on the teensy tiny little solar panels on the service craft. So start to look more like a space station too which is always good now the uh, as you can see the solar panels are kind of offset from the central core part there I built this so that the um, radiators will clear the panels basically I think if they turn if the solar panels turn at a 90 degree angle they might clip a little bit but it doesn't matter so let's get a look at it with everything all glorious all right so we're undocking you can see how crooked one of the arrays looks like it's straight, but the other one is not, and it's really obvious uh, at certain angles. It does not look good, but we'll, that's something I'll continue to tweak in my own time. So we're just backing off, get clear of the station so we can get this thing on a return trajectory back down to the planet. Uh, trying to, like, A, keep my parts count down, and B, actually get a look at what the station's going to look like when it's all good to go. I usually am lazy, and I just use Mech Jeb and tell it to go retrograde, because... That way I don't have to actually turn the ship. I can just have Mech Jeb do it. Especially, of course, if we're 
dealing with signal delay of any sort, I would really rather have Mech Jeb do it then. So we'll just do that, fire up the uh, thrusters, and get out of here. So long, space station. We'll be right back. Well, this guy never will, but... Alright, so this is what we're working with right now. Uh, we still have that one service craft attached up there. This is what the station more or less is going to look like um, from this end. Everything else kind of goes back in another central core. So the next thing we really need to do is start getting this thing ready for some habitation. It does have a command pod of its own, or not a command pod, but it has a, um, a probe core of its own now. So it is a valid vessel. I'm gonna go crash this thing now, which is always fun, and uh, get ready for the next launch. All right, so this is a little bit beefier of a launching vehicle here because this payload is a little bit bigger and slightly heavier, so I have these large uh, liquid fuel boosters on here, which I really like. I actually should use them more. And we're a little bit wobbly on the way up. Not, not liking that, but it straightens out. And, uh, I don't know, this thing looks kind of legit with its fairing on and stuff. I like how this thing looks. Pretty cool, actually. I should probably modify this to be what I used to actually get crew up there. I like this thing. But, uh, anyway, the launch pretty much goes off without a hitch, and we'll meet you up there. Alright, I'm taking a, uh, steeper trajectory than I usually would for this, just because... Uh, it did have trouble turning over and doing the gravity turn in the lower part of the atmosphere, so I have it on a more gentle ascent so that we don't have the, sim the same kind of issues. Basically, I just want to make sure we get as high up as possible, as quickly as possible, and still be relatively fuel efficient. But fuel efficiency was less of a concern. It was more of a concern just to make sure uh, it didn't flip out. Because this, uh, ha it, 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 well, you'll see the actual unit we're launching here in a second. I'm getting ready to separate the fairing here. I'm kind of doing this on the fly so that I can uh, keep things, because I didn't really like the way it was staged there. I like to ditch the fairing so they, you know, I don't think the fairing stays debris, but I don't know. So, you can see here, this is uh, the habitat module, and for some reason, I don't know if it's the, the height, it's not that heavy, I don't know why, but uh, it was kind of unstable on the way up, so I just wanted to make sure that we actually made it out of the atmosphere, or at least most of the atmosphere we're at. 40 kilometers now, so it's high enough that there's barely any atmosphere to affect. Drag seemed to be a really bad problem with this for some reason. So, uh, with that, you know, safely high enough that we're in good shape to get up there. Uh, rendezvous should be a pretty simple thing. I'll meet you when we get the docking underway. Alright, we're just trying to slow down now. Uh, Mech Jeb kind of overshot the optimal distance there. It does that sometimes, but we'll close the gap. At least that engine stopped it pretty quick. Uh, now we're just closing in for the actual docking procedure here. So you can kind of see what I'm saying now. Um, there's a docking port opposite of us. That's kind of one of the ship access points. And then there's going to be basically a central tube that runs down the station. So we'll have the solar panels at a 90 degree angle to that. And this unit here is going to be kind of the backbone of this part of the station. Where everything else is going to be attached to it. Uh, we do have some lights on this. So you can kind of see what the heck is going on. Even though we're in the dark, and I always like to put a lot of lights on my space stations just because uh, they look pretty, and it makes it look more, I don't know, futuristic and Star Trek-y, I guess, having lights on everything, because, you know, in space you need to see stuff, I guess, even though you probably wouldn't really need to that much. I wish the lights on the windows actually, I wish uh, the, the windows had lights on it in this. Uh, so a lot of the mods have windows that light up, but the stock crew cans do not, the the tuna cans there but anyway uh, this is probably about all we're gonna do for this episode uh, we're gonna be able to transfer some crew up here pretty soon we still need to get enough food and stuff so they don't die but uh, we'll do that in the next episode and just go ahead and pop that thing right off there's no fuel storage up here yet so normally I would transfer extra fuel out but we have all the RCS that that can take and I can't put any liquid fuel on here right now because there's no tanks which is you know, something we'll deal with. I always put liquid fuel tanks on every station I build so that uh, we can top off fuel tanks as we go. So uh, anyway guys I want to thank you for watching. Uh, when we come back we'll probably continue working on this space station. I think there might be some more stuff going on at Moho if I have the footage recovered or not. I don't know but uh, I'll catch you next time and thanks for watching.